Hey guys, this is John from JBR Play, and welcome to our introduction video to the Warden class from the Ferrana Beta. So just to give you a summary of who the Warden is, he's a member of the Knights faction, and he wields a big two-handed sword, like a big two-handed claymore. Um, and in my opinion, he is the jack of all trades. So he kind of fits nicely in between the other two um, classes within his faction. So you have the Conqueror and the Peacekeeper. The Peacekeeper is a very fast dual wielder who um, is very agile. The Conqueror, on the other hand, is very big and tanky. The Warden, he has some of the tankiness of the Conqueror. He's more tanky than the Peacekeeper, and he's faster than the Conqueror. So he's kind of got the best of theirs, but he's not as good as them at it. So yeah, he is the jack of all trades. He's a tankier than the Peacekeeper, and he's faster than the Conqueror, but he doesn't beat them at their own game. So he's a very handy all-arounder. So now what we're going to look at is the Warden-specific moveset. As you can see on the left-hand side here, there are four unique moves to the Warden. Renown. Earn more renown in outnumbered fights by controlling objectives and by killing enemy soldiers to unlock your feats in a match. This is obviously a very important skill in big game modes like Dominion. Revenge mode. Boosts damage and health. All attacks are uninterruptible. Parry and throws knock enemies down. Attacks are auto parried on activation. Revenge mode is very handy and I'd highly recommend it no matter which game mode you're in. It's just awesome. Light attack combo. Second side light attack is guaranteed if first one hits. So that's a very useful ability. So if you hit someone with your first light attack, which is the right bumper button, the second one is guaranteed to hit. That is really important and really useful. Crushing Counter-Strike. Top light attack has superior block property. During the startup, use it to counter-attack. Attack becomes unblockable after a counter. Again, this is very useful, and because it's unique to the Warden, if you're fighting someone else, they're not going to be able to do it if they're not a Warden. So keep that in mind and remember those, because they are very important. But now we're going to move on to the Warden's feats. And here are the feats themselves. Feats are basically abilities, they just got a different name in Frona. And as you can see here, there's a list of four, but you can change them. So let's start with the top, which is where we have body count. Passive. Killing soldiers grants you health and stamina. That's obviously pretty self-explanatory and very useful. The next is Conqueror. Passive. Capture and upgrade control zones faster. Again, pretty self-explanatory and very useful. This one's locked, but you can get it later, called Come At Me. Get more renown from kills, but take more damage from attacks. So obviously there is a big benefit to that, but it's also, there's a risk to it too. So you want to be careful using that one. Now we have Inspire. Allies deal more damage, soldiers fight faster. Very useful. Then we have the Fiat Lux. <laughs> I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Throw a flash grenade that blinds enemies for a few seconds. Obviously, if you can daze another opponent with a flashbang, that's going to be very useful. You can get some good hits in. Thick Blood. Passive. Gain immunity from regular bleed damage. <laughs> very handy again. Second Wind. Recover some of your health. That's going to be important no matter what mode you're playing. It's going to be very useful. Then you have the Pugno Mortis. Throw an explosive that deals moderate damage in an area. Very handy. Pretty self-explanatory. Take Down. Throws make enemies fall to the ground. That's going to be very useful, especially when you're in a really crazy situation. If you can knock your enemy down to the ground, it's going to benefit you hugely. And finally, we have the Catapult. Call a catapult strike to deal massive damage over an area. That sounds awesome, and believe me, it is awesome. And yeah, pretty self-explanatory again, but also very useful. Stalwart Banner. Nearby allies continuously regain health. Really useful in a big mode like Dominion, where you have multiple allies running around the field. Not so useful in a duel. Morale Booster. Improve the damage of nearby allies for a short duration. Again, that's very useful in the big multiplayer modes, where there's lots of people instead of just the one-on-one -on -one modes. And now we're going to move on to the customization itself. This part's really cool. Now, For Honor has an incredible amount of customization to it. You, there's so much to do. This is just one page of it here. So let me just show you quickly. You have outfits, so you can kind of change the style there. And the further you get into the game, you can unlock more like elite, mythic, and reputation. And they're more and more detailed. Sadly, we only have battle because this is the beta. But you can also change uh, your gender from male to female. Uh, you can change your head, left shoulder, right shoulder. So it really does go into a lot of detail. Your colors very important, material, which they're made out of, so obviously most of these are locked, but you see it going around the armor there, that looks very cool, and uh, more importantly though, this is the more important part, it is your armor itself, so you can customize your armor in this game, and your weapon, and it does help with statistics, so in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see there are different stats for your helmets, so this is the original helmet I started off with, and this is one I've unlocked, and you can see it's got debuff resistance, revenge mode duration, exhaustion recovery. The important thing to remember is each item, so your arms or your helmet or your chest, will in fact do different things for you. So if th this is my standard one. And now if I go to this one, 
My block damage is slightly worse, but my sprint speed is a lot faster. So I'm going to test that one out. This is going to be very useful, being able to run faster so I can get away from people. Um, the really cool part about customization, though, that I think Forno is quite unique in doing this, I haven't seen this in another game before, is the way you customize your weapons. Now, instead of just getting a new sword and swapping to that, you actually build your weapon, as I'll show you here. So with the blade, I've got multiple blades. And again, they have different stats, attack, defense, stamina reduction, and they all look different and they all do different things. I've actually got the Rogan blade because it's better for attack. And I'm quite an offense. The way I play this game is quite aggressive. So for me, this is a very good weapon. And uh, what I can do now is go to the handguard. And as you can see here, they each do different things. Um, I'm going for this one, though, purely because I just really like the look of it. <laughs> I know it's not the best way to design it. And finally, we have the hilt, where you've got different ones again with different stats. And each of the stats are different to the previous part of the weapon, so they won't all boost the same thing. So that's very important to remember when building your weapon. And yeah, I mean, look, it's a very nice looking weapon. And the fact that you can go into this level of customization is just awesome. It's, you're going to spend hours just customizing your character and making them look really, really wicked. So there's another thing I can show you now where they've actually got emotes in this game and they're pretty funny. So let's have a look at some of those. Okay, so here we have the emotes. That first one is I lost. <laughs> well, obviously you get very angry, depressed and just feel the need to hit the floor. The second one is victory where, yeah, as soon as you win, you can just swing your sword in the air like you just don't care. And then one to buy of in-game currency is I rock, which is quite a boastful one. I'll be using that one against Ben and Rick a lot, I think. And then we have combat emotes, which is what's your problem? <laughs> we have the shoulder blade too, which again, that's kind of more of a, that is a Ferrana type thing, isn't it? It's like, ah, I bash my shield at you, sir. Shield? Shoulder. <laughs> and then finally, we have another one you can buy, the sword point, which is more of a thrust. So yeah, they're, they're just a little bit of fun. They're not really important for the game, but each class has unique ones, so it's quite cool. But the important things now, which are quite similar, I'm going to show you the executions. So there are three different executions for the Warden class. The Hilt Strike, the Backhand Strike, and the Guts Then Chop. So let's have a quick look at them. This one here is the Hilt Strike. And now the Backhand Strike. Ooh, that's a lot of blood. And then finally, the one you have to buy is the Guts Then Chop. Oh, oh that's brutal. And his head's gone. Um, so yeah, those are the executions, which you get at the end of a fight. So you'll notice it in dual mode more. When you beat someone, it will say push X or Y to do this execution. Then you can do it. And they look really cool. It's a really good way. Of it's like a fatality in Mortal Kombat. And finally, just to show you guys how the warden works, I'm going to go into dual mode now and just show you a bit of a fight so you can see the mechanics and how the warden actually fights in a duel. It's fight time. Right, we can do this. We're against an Orochi from the Samurai faction, so he's a bit quicker than us, so we need to be careful. But well, hopefully, I can show you guys some really cool moves here. See, the blocking is very good. You've got to be quick. It's all about your reactions. And the, as you can see with our heavy attack there, we're not the fastest of attackers. But at the same time, we can dish a lot of damage out. Oh, he's a good blocker, this guy. See, now look at that. We've caught up in damage quite nicely just from one hit. He can do some damage to us, but nowhere near as much as we can do to him. And this is the important part. There we go. Oh, execution. And yeah, so as you see, it was quite handy. We were tanky there. We're not the tankiest class, but we can still take some good hits and we can still do some good damage. And we've got some speed there so we can roll out of the way. So there's just a brief introduction to what the Warden is like. And there we have it. That is a brief summary of the Warden class. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you found this video useful and that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. I will be bringing out some more videos as well in the Conqueror class and the Peacekeeper as well. But until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.